try it one more time. It is, do, don't get it twisted, a ton of core work. To catch the balance is one thing, to maintain it and keep it moving, expressing and growing is a ton of core work. So you can get there and chill and just stay there, but if you wanna to start to lift, rotate, you're gonna feel it a lot in the core, deeply, deeply. Let's see. Nice. Yes. Yeah, Nicole, that's it. Just be willing to get your face a little closer to the floor. I get it. When your face is close to the floor, it can be a little terrifying. But just consider if you do have and you feel that kind of mental resistance to the floor being so close, just grab yourself a nice little crash pad, like a little pillow, something you know you'll fall fluffy into. No, no, no. No, no. Yes, looking good, looking good, June. Looking good. Mm -hmm. So June, I want you to think about pressing away from your fingertips and rounding your spine more. Yes. Yes. So then you'll lift and torque. You start to create more space between you and the floor. Yes. Spread those toes, ankles up. So good. So, so good. Okay. Coming back. Forward fold. Side crow. Lots of fun things to do. So like when we're, and this is always something that you can add into your practice whenever we're doing like an ukatasana twist, you wanna give yourself a couple breaths to work on this, to integrate this core work, to integrate the memory, you know? Those are places that you can add in in your practice. And it's something that's super transitional. We can transition into headstands, we can transition into arm balances, we can go from arm balances to headstands. So many things to do with crow pose. All right, let's take a forward fold. We're gonna flow it out and then we're gonna move on to our chin stand. Yeah. Back of the mat, you're folded forward. Walk yourself out to downward facing dog. Nice, inhale, come forward to high plank. I don't know what you got on your back there. Keep those hips high. Move forward and down, chaturanga. Not too low, too low, too low. There, inhale, upward facing dog. Squeeze this, rotate, open. Nice, exhale, go back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, and big breath out, draw back, upper ribs in. Inhale, high to tiptoes. Exhale, bend the knees, walk or jump your feet to meet your hands, top of the mat. Good, halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Bend your knees, head and hands stay heavy, slowly roll all the way up. Take an inhale, reach up and look up. Exhale, fold all the way down. Halfway lift, inhale. Hands to the floor, step back, high plank, and pause. Oh, wait. Soften through here. Yeah, keep these high, pubic, no, a little softer. A little softer. Yes, 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 pubic bones to belly button, lengthen the low back, hips a little higher, softer through here. Hold, but resist, you got this. Elbows wrap back, longer neck. Like you're holding an apple and orange underneath it. Yes, there we go. Look forward to where you wanna go. Press all the way forward off your toes. Keep looking forward. Even like pick up your feet and go me, me. Bring your shoulders way past your wrists. Now look forward and drop down, chaturanga. Pause, there, squeeze the <laughs> shoulder blades. Inhale, upward facing dog. Different? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> downward facing dog. Come down to your knees, tabletop. Kick your right leg back. Nice. Okay, make sure your hands are right underneath the shoulders. Tuck the bottom toes under. Nice, and really reach that right leg. Long, long, long. Sunbird bows. So, the sunbird bow, do you remember these? So I was gonna look forward. I want you guys, like you know when I tell you guys to like stay slick to the rib cage? This is not an exaggeration, especially for this one. You're wrapping your elbows externally so much so that you're pulling them into the rib cage. They slide around the sides and your shoulder tips will meet fingertips. So come down into that chin tap. And Elle, I want you to bring, yes, keep those elbows high to the sky and come back up. Take your hands a little bit further forward maybe. Nice. 
And then lean back forward, pull your heart through as you lower. Elbows high to the sky, point them up. Nice, and come back up. Again, I want you to stay so slick. Wrap the elbows back into the rib cage, out and around, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Nice, elbows squeeze into you to lift you back up. Squeeze them into you, keep them tight and slick. Nice. So, do you feel that? Yeah, but I think I'm missing it. You're missing it on the way up. So, Elle's doing it super nice on the way down. She's tracing her rib cage. She's hugging into the midline. She's super supportive. Even here, you were perfect. Something happened when you came back up, you let the elbows flare out, and then it's a struggle to lift back up. So by hugging, anytime we're moving into the midline, we are stronger. So when you're squeezing in, you keep it slick, you squeeze in to help bring you back up. Then you're using the back of your arms, you're using your core, you're not using your neck and those delicate muscles throughout the top, okay? So try it again. Something also to keep in mind is that bottom knee. I like my knee directly underneath the hip, not too far forward or too far back, so even bring the knee forward a little more. Yeah, perfect. Okay, look forward, no noodles. Wake up that leg, nice. <laughs> look forward, lean forward, slick, chin tap, elbows high. Fingers to four, grip. And then press into the fingertips, yes. So that's actually a really good cue. Do not underestimate the power of your fingertips. You need to be gripping the ground, they need to be connected. Not just the knuckles, like where fingers meet palm, your entire, this has to be plugged in. Like grip, like grip, you are sucking the floor up through your hands. And fingers forward a little more. Index fingers forward a little more. Yes, nice. So you're gonna do three thumb bows much better and bring your hands closer together so they're right underneath the shoulders. See how wide they are? Nice, now forward and down. Elbows high, yes, that's the one. And up. Last one, forward and down, elbows high, fingers grip to press you back up, elbows squeeze in, slick. Nice, and come down to your knees. Okay, so now that we've practiced that pathway, it's something you really need to work into your brain is that it is slick up and down, super tight. So just like we create a shelf for ourselves, <laughs> elf shelf, elf on the shelf. Okay, so just like we're creating a shelf for our crow pose, for our side crow pose, we're finding these 90 degree angles and creating a shelf with the upper arm, right? Same thing when we do our chin stand. Here, I'm gonna fly in for a second. So when we do our chin stand, it's the same concept. So the chin, we call it a chin stand, but really it is an arm balance. The chin is just there for, for just a little bit of balance, but you're not putting all the pressure on your chin. There's like maybe 20% pressure on your chin. The rest of it is in your arms. So we're gonna wrap the elbows in. You make the shelf chin to four. Here we come up. There's not really pressure. Look, I can lift my chin. There's no pressure on the chin. It helps you to get down. Okay, couple things. I'm getting too excited, I'm sorry. Couple things. Very important that this is a chin tap. Do not, by any circumstances, smush your face into the floor. It's gonna hurt, it's not gonna feel nice, and it's not cute. Some other, uh, another reason why we wanna keep the chin lifted is because if we have our face down, remember with our handstands, right? If our face is down, our tailbones can flip over. With the chin lifted like this, with, unless you are like super contortion, so if you're super hypermobile in your spine, this is something you will have to watch. If you have a stiffer spine, you don't have that much back mobility, you won't have to worry about this as much. <clears throat> but you wanna make sure the chin stays forward because nine times out of 10, your, your weight will always come back to where you started. If your face is down, that's when it can get scary and you can go over and forward. But with the chin lifted, your weight will always pull you back. Why? 
because you're almost already in this back bend and the weight of your legs will pull you back. Yeah? So you're gonna take three chin taps, very much like our handstand. Bottom leg is the spring, top leg is momentum. If this is a noodle, it's not gonna work. So you have to make sure there's lots of energy, lots of reach through the heart and through the heel or the toes. I like to use momentum, so I'll do. So, and another, uh, sorry guys, another thing to consider, if you're doing these chin taps with ease, wrapping the elbows down or tapping, you can keep the arms slick. These are a good indicator. Like if you can do five of these clean, you're ready to fly up into the arm balance. If they're not super clean yet, take your time, build the strength, keep your core engaged. So you're gonna go down. Three, two, spring, elbows are under, toes are lengthening. Let's give it a shot, girly. And you're tucking your tailbone still, or is it like an arch one? Okay. Don't think about the tailbone in this one. Okay. This is one of the inversions where just think about the toes and the reach for the legs. Forget about the tailbone. You can with refining. Yeah, so making sure your hands, you can even go a little more narrow. Narrow. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you're going to look forward. You're going to chin tap. Three. Nice. Two. Elbows under you. So try to get your elbows to touch. Nope, come up. You want your elbows underneath the rib cage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chin to four. So come back up. Look at me like this, underneath them. You're making a shelf. <laughs> Put them, yeah, like that, chin to four, now float the bottom uh, knee. Uh -huh. okay. You get it? Mm -hmm. Chin up, float the bottom knee. Go for it, give a little kick. Reach through that top leg. Yeah, squeeze the toes together. Lengthen up, oh. so good. <laughs> See, so yeah, a lot yeah. of it is like momentum, no hesitation, but you felt it, you got there. Yeah, Something else you can do for the chin stand, put your hands right behind these blocks. This is something, guys, you wanna be really careful. If you're gonna do this by yourself at home, I would do this, like imagine this is your wall, like I'm the wall here, and you would put your blocks at the edge of the mat, would be the wall. You'll put your blocks a little bit middle, okay? You don't wanna roll over forward. So you're gonna bring your chin to the floor and your shoulders onto the blocks. Elbows underneath you, like they're trying to touch underneath the rib cage. Lift, yes, 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 toes to me. Lengthen up and out of the low belly. Press through your fingertips, toes together. Yes, lift, low belly. It's so good, from here. This lifts you. Yes! Is that your first time? Yes. <laughs> I love it, so good. Take a second, let me, you take a second. I'm gonna see what's going on at the computer over here. How we doing, guys? Yes, okay. And Sophie, looking super good. Super good. Use the bottom leg more. Spring off the bottom leg. Spring. Yes, toes together, low belly. So once you catch the hover, so good. Once you catch the hover, it's your fingertips. Grip the floor and press away, okay? You wanna make sure you're always maintaining that activity in your arms. Yes. 